y'all. I'm back after a while after my trip to Glastonbury to record again to share my insights, perspectives, learnings, wisdoms and of course over here we have a very new development and injury. Oh, it's getting warm in here as I'm speaking about it. But I was in Glastonbury on the way to the White Springs. The White Spring is a really beautiful place where people go to get this really fresh spring water but also for healing. And I was about to go there to cleanse some um, wands that I purchased for my friends. And I wanted to do a little ritual when I was there. Um, so I was on the way there. I was probably just about 15 meters away. So straight ahead, turning to the left, I would have arrived at my destination. I was walking with my friend Stephanie and we were walking and just chatting about various stuff as we were walking just about five meters before the turn. Probably maybe a bit more than that. I can't really remember it's no it's more than that it's more than five meters uh probably at least like 15 meters sorry i probably was a bit further away from the place than i remembered um i just heard a voice tell me bring your shawl in i had a really really long shawl um that would just cut off by my calves on both sides as i hook it around my neck um, and I just felt a pull to bring it in and as I was bringing it in with my right arm a camper van, a RV, recreational vehicle, it was driving by I was in the sidewalk, it was on the road it hit my shoulder um, its mirror, really big mirror, hit my shoulder and immediately you could hear BUM! it's like a loud impact, it sounded like something was knocked into I moved forward, I was in shock, I was like, okay, that kind of was crazy. Then immediately the first thought in my mind was, oh my god, is their mirror okay? Like, I hope their mirror is okay. I hope their mirror is not damaged. Second thought in my mind, oh my god, they're slowing down the RV at the, at the end of the road before the turn. What if it's damaged? They're going to be upset. Then those split second thoughts came to my mind and then my friend Stephanie asked are you okay so the third question that came into my mind was are you okay because she was the one who prompted that that's when I really truly see and recognized and I don't call these people pleasing tendencies for me to me it is my natural inclination to put everyone else before myself and I say this with a lot of disappointment in myself because I thought that I have put in so much time and work into trying not to be a people pleaser in the earlier part of my journey and then I realized it wasn't about people pleasing it's the fact that I love everyone and I want everyone to be well and I knew that I had a tendency to put others first I just didn't know it was to this extent where an actual vehicle would have hit me and I would have put it first and I feel extremely sad also thinking about it not just from the disappointment in myself but from grieving all the younger versions of myself that didn't know better and put everyone else first before me to then steal away from myself the opportunity to live life a little more liberally a little more in congruence with what felt right to me and all those moments where I shut it down was me shutting down my sensitivity, my emotions, it was me shutting down my intuition and I've learned from this reflection and introspection on the heat that there's so many observations you can put in every single moment to get wisdom to experience various emotions and you might have done everything that you wish to but there always will be more to do it's very humbling to be human to 
then remember that okay you can't always have everything be perfect and I think that also is the beauty of life that I'm being reminded of to make things really obvious and clear when I tell people I run on faith I am filled by source it's because I have opened up myself to be of service to humanity and it's not from a place where I would forego myself and now I know very clearly how definitely not to forego myself is to ask about myself first question if I'm okay first before I check in on another which might seem very um, natural right and maybe some people might think oh it's conditioning but I can tell you deeply deeply truly with if I want to use astrology as an excuse my sun moon Leo which is very loving and my rising Aquarius <laughs> I naturally will put everyone else first because I I feel happy when everyone's happy it it truly is it it's painful for me when I see others hurt I really hate that I get very impatient I get angered because it's me almost like expressing a repressed version of the other party that is disappointed and upset with themselves for being in circumstances less than ideal um, but back to the main reflection I I think I been made very clear from this incident how important it is to love everyone but then to always put myself first and to know that it never is selfish even if people might look at it as that because they'll never walk my shoes they'll never know my experiences they'll never know what it's like to be as sensitive as I am to pick up on so many things you know it's beyond just like being a leader and taking care of people it's the fact that you can see where they would be stubborn and understand their shadows and understand where their, their nervous system is and because of that even though you know a lot of things that would help them but maybe they're not receptive to listening and it's not yet time for you to share maybe you've gotten a vision or a premonition of five years down the road what it is for them and how it's gonna be like for them but you can't get in the way of their journey and as simple as it sounds when it is with people that you really love and care for and if you really love and care for a lot of people the natural inclination to want to step in to help them is going to be very strong and I think why I am also learning a lot about patience not because I'm trying to be patient but then the baseline thing to practice is acceptance right before patience it's always acceptance once you're ex accepting of some stuff or things for the way they are you will be patient um, you naturally will honor people the way they're meant to be but it puts me in a very difficult spot because I then don't know like when do I step in when do I help if people ask for help how much help do I offer based off the knowledge and insights that I have because not everyone wants to know what I know and not everyone is a believer of the things that I sense and pick up so it's very different from my perspective when I sense all these things. It's to a different extent. It is extremely infuriating. I am still learning to balance it out. And I'm very grateful that I have this life to figure it out. And that I am in this line of work that would allow me so many points of listening to stories and witnessing and feeling intuitively empathically the stories of others to then learn and gain a lot of wisdom to then be able to share even more which is what I'm doing in this video um, it doesn't take away from the disappointment I feel in myself and I think in me blabbering and sharing all these things I feel like it's a bit incoherent I'd like to remind all of you that it never will feel like enough but you should always feel like it is enough and it never is wrong to put yourself first if it is not at the expense of others where you're hurting them you shouldn't be hurting others at the expense of yourself that being said if someone feels hurt by your actions 
not because you're trying to inflict pain. Maybe it's by accident or maybe they are just in a very different hate space. You have to then honour them with being able to sit with the hurt and know it's not on your part. No, I, I did not feel any pain immediately. I think because I was in shock, I was travelling. When I'm travelling, I'm always in high alert. It's the same as how in a highly stressful society, we block things out. I was doing that as I was travelling. I just um, wasn't aware of how much it was, the intensity, because um, I was shutting off my intuition or maybe not shutting off but not very aware of it like I usually would be when I'm back in Singapore and actively channeling and doing readings. So I'm traveling, I'm trying to, trying to be a bit more passive with everything. Um, so I wasn't aware that I had muted everything to such extent that I wasn't feeling the pain that was building up in my arm. I was lugging and pushing my 30 plus kg um, baggage around because I, I packed a whole load of stuff and I also purchased some stuff. And it was aggravating a wound that was already there that I wasn't confronting. Thankfully, after I came back to Singapore for just about a couple of days, this was just about five days after the incident, I started to feel the pain. Thankfully, I felt the pain. It hurt like a motherfucking bitch. <laughs> Gruesome mix of dull and sharp pain. I felt tingles. I felt hot and cold. So there are specific spots that really hurt and specific spots that would be numb. It went all the way down to my last two fingers from my neck it stemmed from my shoulder. I was very worried when I realised my nerves were affected um, and something was pinching on it. It made me wonder if something was out of place, um, dislocated, broken. I was concerned. Um, but then, you know, I was, I was telling myself, don't manifest it. So I shut it off for one more day. The next day it hurt like it was next level. The pain was next level. That's when I decided I'm going to the polyclinic, but then it was Sunday, so I was a bit too late. Um, thankfully, it's Monday the next day, so I had to tolerate a whole day of pain. I could not sleep properly on my pillow because there was no proper position that would have felt right. Even if I were to sleep on my left when my right shoulder is hurting, the pressure was already hurting all the way down and it would bring the numbness down to my fingers. And... It's, it really is not pleasant at all. I could not sleep. Right up till now, this is two weeks later, I'm operating on blocks of three to four hours sleep, two times a day. Um, and I can only sleep at now. Yesterday was better, around like 5, 6 a.m. Uh, but previously it was 7 a.m. And I was definitely in London time. I've always been in London timing, but it really anchored down on it after I travelled to the UK. Um, so my quality of rest is... <laughs> which means it's hard for me to recover, but I also didn't want to fight the flow of my body's pacing in recovering from the time zone difference and and whatever I'm feeling, you know, if I'm feeling the pain and it's keeping me awake, then there must be a reason I trust that I have to feel the pain as a part of the recovery process. And this is a physical manifestation of that, right? And maybe some people will look at it and think, wow, you're so unlucky, you shouldn't travel during Seven Man Hungry Ghost Festival. Um, you know, but that one voice that called, for me to bring my shawl in was what saved me from an accident that would have gotten me bedridden after being rolled over by an RV. I actually quickly saw a vision after that voice came in of me being hooked by the scarf and rolled over um, by a vehicle that's heavy. I just knew it was heavy, so the relevance would be a bigger vehicle, like a lorry or a truck, but then it was an RV. Um, and that's when I knew that I was loved and cared for and favoured enough to not have to go through something worse because if I were less aware, less intuitive um, it would have been 
played out like that and I would have been in the UK, my parents would be worried, which is the last thing that I want to put upon them as an adult child. Eldest of three. <laughs> um, so this one incident left me still mobile and walking, but I can't do my planks, I can't do my handstand practices, I can't do my back bends, I can't do the things I usually do to stretch and be mobile and to stay strong. But I have so much gratitude and a re anchoring of my faith. And I've never felt more trusting of everything beyond it now. And it's funny because you would hear people who would share their testimonials, right? Of like how they found God. And I'm not going to preach something like that. I'm just here to share my experience. But I've, I've been skeptical still throughout the trip even as I entered this pilgrimage that Stephanie hosted. Um, if you're curious about her retreats, you can search up Soma Psyche Alchemy on Instagram. Um, but I've never had more trust in the divine being so loving towards me and so supportive of me. And I'm happy that I'm sensible enough and wise enough to see that a hit like that is me being loved and cared for rather than people who would maybe either be in disgruntlement feeling like oh my god i can't move i can't be mobile i can't be active you know i was planning to start on <laughs> martial arts the last quarter of 2024 which we're in now but obviously i can't and it's a call to not do that right now and to be a bit more steady and still and i'm learning to trust that and I just feel so loved despite everything and it makes it clear when people are anxious and crawling to me for help and clawing at me for my attention to interact with me in the past I would try to reply ASAP now I don't not even for my friends because I realize that the more I'm present for them even if it's in a very small way being of support, the more I'm spoon feeding. And if I were to truly in full embodiment of my own beliefs of autonomy and empowerment, practice that in my dynamic relationally, not just for myself in my own personal development, I would let them spiral. I'll let them go through their crazed moments and not be there for them. Because I trust that they are supported and I trust that in their presence in my life, my presence in their life, my prayers to them and the blessings I, I send to them every single time, they will come to support them in the toughest moments. And I feel like for the longest time, whenever someone's anxious, I would be so ready to step up and sit there and they would spiral for hours and even though the spirals might not look like a full-on anxiety attack, it is a spiral. I would have sat there because for years I've spiraled since I was young and nobody was there for me. And I felt a lot of sadness. For when I had to go through that, to witness someone going through that is very painful for me because it is triggering for me. And I'm now acknowledging how it's triggering for me and I'm not supposed to take away from their journey because if the years I've been suicidal and depressed and anxious and not even knowing that I was having anxiety attacks, Over 10 years, close to 15, of going through that, I managed to come out stronger. Therefore, as long as another individual needs to, I would bear witness to that and I would acknowledge every step of their journey, no matter how painful it is, and remind them of their autonomy, remind them that they're capable, and I'll be that voice to encourage them, but I'll not hold them in their painful moments. Because I trust that they can bring themselves out and overcome it. (sighs) 
every year around June to mid July, I'll be in a grievous um, state, especially after my intuition has heightened. And I get a lot of channel messages for the collective. That's not yet time for me to share. And I'll know when the time is. Uh, when the time is. <laughs> but it's usually the uh, the grief of the collective. The grief of the earth. And it's really painful to sit through. And it hurts me because when I step out, I can almost like hear the cries of every soul that's unfulfilled or not yet on the journey to fulfillment and this is part of the reason why I am doing the work that I'm doing and trying to offer support and now trying my best also to not forgo myself as I'm doing it so for example I'm trying to do less live sessions to offer things that you can tap into as resource in your own time to have you learn to trust your intuition learn to trust your journey learn to learn how to trust yourself <laughs> learn to see how I'm guiding you without having to be 100% present and there's no need for physical presence for you to know that things are true just like the energy of love it is meant to be felt it's not meant to be understood And I hope that every single one of you understand when I'm here and speaking the way I do in any of our interaction one to one if I do interact with you or choose not to I'm very clear as to why and it's always because it's better for you and I and that's everything I use in measure for what I should do is it best for you and myself is it best for the other person and myself for me to act upon things in a certain way how would it be better and know that I do not intend to inflict upon anyone hurt at all sometimes I meant to deliver readings that feel wildly non-resonant that dissonance is to trigger you to find the answers for yourself and sometimes the readings are not meant to resonate because you received it way too early and maybe 10 years later it'll make sense a year later three months later whatever it is i trust that the universe will support you i trust that god and source will support you and it's not in my place to offer the additional support my role is to be a mirror my role is to trigger and triggers do not necessarily have to be bad because a trigger like this brought me so much revelations and wisdom joy understanding of love I'm crying not from the pain I'm crying because I understand that the pain comes with love and I'm feeling the love as deeply as I'm feeling the pain we never can experience one emotion more than another and you have to trust that I'm gonna cut it off because this is getting too lengthy thank you for your presence thank you for listening take care be well <laughs>